What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. In today's quick tutorial, we'll be showing the final part, part three in the Raspberry Pi SSH series, where we initially showed you some cool things of how to do some remote control of your Raspberry Pi via SSH. In this video in particular, we'll be showing you how to remote desktop into your Raspberry Pi. So what I mean by that is what you can see here, I'm actually signed in on my local Mac, but I'm viewing the screen of my Raspberry Pi in my local Mac, and I'm able to control it from the screen and do operations as if I was signed in and connected to a monitor, the same exact way, all via this program called Real VNC Viewer. So we'll be walking through how to get this set up. And before we do, in order to get this set up, you have to go and watch part one, if you haven't, which I'll link in the top right here, that shows us some basic steps to get the information we need. And before we get into it as well, be sure to like, comment, subscribe to the channel. And I do not want to waste any of your time. Let's get started. Okay, so the first step is we simply want to download VNC Viewer. So we could just do a simple Google search and click download VNC Viewer there and just download the specific one for our system. I used a Mac because I have a Mac. And you could just go ahead and download it. And also what you want to do is you want to sign up for VNC Viewer and you could just go ahead and click free trial. And do not be alarmed because even after the free trial, you can still use it. The only thing is if you are using this for production systems and you have many systems that you want VNC on, you will probably have to upgrade to their paid version. But for our applications for a single person use, this should be more than fine forever, even after the free trial. So just go ahead and create an account. So I already downloaded it. I already created an account. And we're just going to go back to my program here. So if you open VNC Viewer, it looks like this. I already have a connection, but we could just go ahead and delete it to show you how it works. So we just go here and typically I just go to the top left here and I say new connection and you just want to enter your IP address. So if you watch part one, you should be able to uh, get this easily or you should have it at hand already. So mine is just 192.168.1.111 and you can just name this wherever you want. We'll just call it Raspberry Pi. Okay. And we can just click OK. And now we just want to double click into this Raspberry Pi. And it's going to ask us for our username and password. This is the username and password for your Raspberry Pi. Okay, so I'm just going to enter that. And if I did everything correctly here, it should simply start allowing me to do things as if I'm signed into my Raspberry Pi. So that's really it. And this is really powerful uh, as opposed to the VS Code implementation, which I showed you in part two. This gives you full control as if you are signed in and you are connected via monitor. So this is awesome. And this really works well if you have a fast internet connection. If you have a slow internet connection, you may notice that this is laggy. But for me, honestly, it's almost the same speed as if I'm signed in and connected to a monitor. So really cool. And I do use this a lot in my personal use cases. So I thought I would show you guys because some beginners are not familiar that you could do something this powerful with your computer and your Raspberry Pi, it's gonna make your life a lot easier when working with this device. So if you learn something in this channel, be, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Also, even better, I always say, consider donating to the channel if you really appreciate this content to continue supporting Shilla Tech. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. Stay tuned, thanks for watching and take it easy, everyone.